His name is Jehovah. That's his name. He said, you shall not bow down to the gods of the peoples. He said, you shall not serve the gods of the peoples. For those of you that don't that are just tuning in, that may have not seen the other parts, my name is Prophet Howard. And this series is entitled, A World in Its Last Days. I want to give you my P.O. Box address again. I want to make sure that you're equipped with the knowledge of what's going to take place in these last days. And I want to make sure that you fully understand that the Bible is the truth. That, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man can come to the Father except by Him. You can't impress God with works. You need to understand these things. If, if you want to discuss it, we can have debates. It don't make no difference. But I don't want to debate anybody that does not have an open mind seeking the truth. If your mind is made up regardless of what you learn or regardless of what you hear, don't even bother writing. My mailing address is Prophet Howard, P.O. Box 90633, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53209. Now I want to continue in this series. I want to go to Matthew 24 now. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And I want to talk, I want to show you some things that Jesus said. Now the question was asked of him. How shall they know when these things shall happen? Peter said, it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things, verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown out. That prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD. It says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That's what we're talking about, a world in his last days. We know this world is in his last days based on, we could go by what Jesus said in Matthew 24 alone. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive. He said no man should deceive. No rapper, no singer, throwing up signs of Ra, worshiping sun gods. No entertainer, no movie. Making it, movies being made nowadays and making it like, it's okay. The message in the movie is saying, the message in 2012, I haven't seen the movie, but I know people that saw the movie. And the message in 2012, based on people that saw the movie, is saying, it's okay, we can, we can win. Mankind is going to win in the end. Deception. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive. No man deceive. No man deceive you. There's a lot of religions in the world. The Bible says God is not the author of, the com of confusion. No man deceive you. You need to learn how to stick with what the disciples said. If your preacher is saying something different, the disciples didn't teach that you can lose salvation. The disciples didn't teach that you can backslide. The disciples didn't teach that we're going to be raptured and that's going to be the end of it. We're going to have a clean escape. And I want to say to you believers, are you having a clean escape now? Did the disciples, the twelve apostles, did they have a clean escape? Then what makes you think that you're going to have a clean escape? He said, many will come. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. I told you in previous parts that there are preachers that are on Christian networks that are part of the agenda. They're paid off. They're hirelings. They don't care for the sheep. And some of y'all, you know, you need to take chances sometimes. You shouldn't always send your money to these popular preachers. You know who they are sitting on TV talking about how blessed they are and how you shouldn't sit so into ministries that's not blessed. And these same preachers is trying to get you not to give preachers like myself and other preachers a chance are with the beast order. He said, You shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. 
He said, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Now the Bible says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And the Bible says that he saves, he looks to those that are contract. When you humble yourself in your faith, and because of your faith, Jesus saved you. And if Jesus saved you, if you're truly saved, he'll give you the strength to endure unto the end. As 1 Corinthians 1 and 8 says, and he shall confirm you unto the end. Now verse 15 in Matthew 24 talks about the abomination of desolation, which has not taken place yet because the temple has not been built yet. But they're in negotiations right now to rebuild the temple on the Temple Mount. And they know where the Ark of the Covenant is. And the Bible teaches that the Antichrist is going to sit on the Ark of the Covenant and declare himself to be God and command it all, worship him. This is going to take place after he's died, he's dead and brought back to life. Because he's going to, he, he wouldn't be able to say that without some sort of, of miracle. So it's going to take place after he's revealed, first seal, and he's killed and brought back to life. Now it says, and then, it says, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets that shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now the Bible says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. If he started it, he's going to finish it. The Bible says that if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So let's say your flesh kicked in and now you're having trouble believing, but you successfully received Christ. Christ is going to strengthen you. That's why I don't get off into people talking about how saved they is. Because we're going to see who's saved in the end when the Bible says he's, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep is going to be with him. The goats is going to be with the enemy in the lake of fire. And that's why you better be real careful. Trusting people that be worshiping goats and all that stuff. So it says... For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Don't believe these people talking about they Jesus and this and that. Don't believe that. You need to be praying that God will show you the truth. Numbers do not dictate true prophets. Do not dictate a man of God. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then, he said, then, this is how we in the last days, based on what Jesus said in the first couple of scriptures of Matthew 24, shows us we in the last days. But he says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his, his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to another. And why are they going to gather us from the four winds? I read to you in Revelation 20 and 4. Because the souls of them that were beheaded, the souls of them that were burned at the stake, the souls of all of those whose name is written in the book of life are going to already be with Christ, not through escape, but through death. Whether they die some other way or whether they die because of their faith. They'll be with Christ when this time comes, when his return comes, because he's coming back at the seventh trumpet. And, if, and I'm going to...